Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Today I am doing another palette review. It's so... Oh, whoa, look at that rainbow. Okay, let's see if the actual palette reflects that much light. No, but you still can't see it. Um, so this is the Urban Decay After Dark palette. I picked this up at Mecca Maxima. Um, you can also grab it at mecca.com.au, the Urban Decay website. I don't know, Sephora in the States. Uh, this palette retails for 80 Australian dollars. It contains 10 eyeshadows. Each eyeshadow contains 1.4 grams of product for a total of 14 grams. So the packaging of the palette is plastic and iridescent. Not that you can really see it now. All you can see is my ring light. Uh, it does have a magnetic closure. It's not super firm, but it's, it's pretty good. It's not bad. Uh, inside there is a mirror which is not big enough to do a full face of makeup if you ask me. Um, it does sort of go right back to, so you know, that's a thing. Uh, but it does support itself which is handy. Um, for me, it's good for doing the eyes, you can get like full eye balance but you can't get your full face in the mirror. It also comes with an eyeshadow brush, which this time I actually used. Um, and I quite like this small, like, detailing end for inner corner and lower lash line work. Um, this end, the shader end, it works, but it's not like, um, mm, I'm not. I'm not really digging it. And here we have the Magical 10. Um, so the formula of these shades, Urban Decay call it a metallized shimmer. And I suppose I would agree with that because these aren't straight up shimmers, but they aren't quite metallics either. They are sort of somewhere in between there. Three of the shades in this palette are cult favorites. Uh, so you've got Backfire, Lounge, and Fringe. The other seven shades are all new. There are two shades in this palette that are duochromes. So you've got this one here, which is Lounge, and this one down here, which is Scene, I think. Yep, Scene. So Lounge is kind of like a greeny, browny plum, and it sort of shifts with those like plum and green tones. It's really interesting. I'm wearing it on my eyelids today. I actually hate the look that I created today but I didn't have time to redo it so we're going with it. Um, and scene down here is um, it's a pink with a gold shift. Uh, you might also consider Ulta to be a little bit duochromey. It's kind of it's like a, a yellow that shifts gold, so like a really pale yellow that ramps up the yellow intensity at times when the light hits it. Um, it's a really pretty colour. The rest of them are just, they're just, they're just, mm, they're like metal, metallized shimmers. When I look at this palette I develop expectations just like I do with every other palette that I look at. And my expectations of this palette is bright and like major color intensity. And these are bright um, and they do have good pigmentation, but it's not quite at the level that I expected. Uh, when I apply these over a standard primer, so let's say the one I'm currently panning is the Lorac Behind the Scenes Eye Primer. Um, they're alright, like they build up okay and you can get that nice colour intensity but I find that they fade throughout the day and they don't look as you know vibrant as when I put them on. Um, if I use this stuff by Too Faced, the glitter glue, I get better results. It sticks better and it holds better throughout the day. Um, but I, I am kind of disappointed in the fact that I need to use a special primer to get the most out of these because I kind of feel like I shouldn't have to do that because these are just shimmery eyeshadows basically. They're metallized shimmers. Um, 
and I don't really pull out the Too Faced glitter glue for any of my other like shimmery eyeshadows because they don't really need it they kind of hold their own their formula <laughs> the nature of their formula is that they kind of have their own adherence uh, which is great so you don't really need to put in extra work or use specific products to make them work but I find with these ones you kind of do looking at the cohesiveness of the palette I actually think it is quite cohesive now if you are like me and you like to wear mattes and shimmers in your everyday look um, you're going to need to bring in another palette because this one contains zero mattes but when we look at it as a bright palette I think the color range is quite good um, you've got a nice selection of like color depth so light medium dark and then you've got a nice color spectrum so you've got like yellows and pinks and hints of red and gold and blue and green and purple and it's all it's lovely I do think that um, they should have swapped out one of these purple shades for potentially an orange shade um, but I do think that both of the blues kind of need to be in there because they are so different from each other and they bring something different to the table. I want to talk about how wearable these shades are and it's not something I usually touch on. Typically I would say something like this is a bright palette. If you don't like brights you're not going to like this palette. Um, but in this case I feel like I need to actually discuss how wearable these shades really are because I think the name of the palette After Dark and how this looks in the palette is quite deceiving. It may very well look to you like something that a young person would wear clubbing or I don't know, what else do we do after dark? Sit in bed, eating McDonald's, watching reruns of Game of Thrones. That's what I do anyway. Um, but in reality these shades are actually quite wearable. This whole row is totally daytime friendly. If you go to work wearing no makeup and then you rock up wearing supersonic, people are going to be like, what the fuck Deborah? What, you, what have you done to yourself? But if you are the type of person who goes to work wearing wings, shimmery eyeshadow, better than sex mascara, maybe even false lashes, no one is going to bat an eyelid if you come in wearing supersonic because it's actually quite muted and wearable, especially if you put it over something like the Lorac Behind the Scenes Primer. You have to, to get serious colour vibrancy and intensity, like what you see in the palette, which may very well be scaring you off looking at it, you have to go to lengths to get that. It's not just like whack it on and off you go. The colours go on quite muted, they fade throughout the day, so what you're left with is a very wearable look. With this row up here, um, I feel like you might have to have a little bit more balls to wear these, but it is going to come down to personal preference, and I'm talking specifically about the two blue shades and this purple shade down here, Druggy. However, Lounge and Backfire totally wearable. I've worn them to see my grandmother and she survived the encounter. Alright, we're going to move on to swatches but before we do I need to let you know that I'm going to finger swatch the whole palette um, but finger swatches are not an accurate representation of how this formula performs. So I am going to do brush swatches but to save my sanity I'm only going to do it over two shades. I'm going to do one of the lighter shades and one of the darker shades. I'm going to compare brush swatches to finger swatches. Um, I'm going to brush swatch over no primer and then two different types of primer, the ones I've talked about in this video. So you guys can see how this formula performs differently with whatever base you're working with. Um, I think it's valuable information to have to get the most out of this palette, especially if you are looking for intense colour vibrancy. Um, you can totally get there, but you got to work for it. Oh, and I'll also show you guys a demo of this look, which I don't really like, but it's all I've got, so we're going with it.
right, demo time, yay, everybody, so excited, clap your hands. Starting with the Too Faced Glitter Glue Primer, it's going all over my eyelid and I'm going to set between my crease and my eyebrow so that the matte shades that go in my crease will have something to stick to. Don't set all of the primer all over the lid, these shades won't perform well. Starting off with the lounge, I am taking that all over the center of the eyelid. You'll get to see the brush that comes in the palette in action right here. It's, um, yeah, yeah, it's struggling. Yeah, it doesn't pick up product very well. It doesn't hold on to product very well. Um, but, you know, it it's, eh, you can work with it. Time for a little bit of Ulta, which is going in the inner corner. That's my this was a mistake face. Um, I don't really, I mean the colors work together but it kind of wasn't quite what I was going for or what I'd envisioned. So you know, I, I'll just roll with it. Ooh, another palette, Ultimate Basics, yes. Uh, so I'm taking Commando apparently and I bet I'm gonna put that in my crease. Yep, great, good work. I actually filmed this demo quite a while ago guys so I, I don't know what's going on. Next up is Lethal and this is going in my outer corner. I remember this part because this shade works beautifully with lounge. They really complement each other and they make for a really nice sort of plummy green smoky eye. So beautiful. And clean fluffy brush for blending of those edges. Get them nice and soft. Good girl. Keep going. Keep going until your arm falls off. This is where everything goes south. I'm taking fringe and for some idiotic reason I think it's going to work in the lower lash line. It doesn't, okay? It just doesn't. Um, I do manage to bring it back to some sort of normalcy towards the end, but it's going to take us a minute to get there. I'm going to try and save it by blending it out, which is, I don't know why I thought that would help. It doesn't. And finally, my brain came back to me and I took off duty and I rubbed that over fringe. This transformed fringe into something that was a little bit similar to lounge but with more blue tones rather than green. Um, I still don't like the yellow in the inner corner altar. It just, I just don't, I don't think it works but from afar you can hardly tell. All right here I am with the mascara and liner on. I am applying a half lash to each of my outer corners. And finally, bottom lash mascara. And there is the finished look. It just, ugh, it looks so muddy. It's so bad. Why you do this to yourself, Hayley? All right, guys, final thoughts on the Urban Decay After Dark palette. Um, look at those fingerprints. I buffed this clean before I started this review and um, that's just what it's collected while I've sat here talking about it. Um, so, despite my criticisms of the palette, um, I actually really like it. So, I do think it's shit uh, that you can't get that beautiful colour vibrancy that you see in the pan or with finger swatches with just like any old eyeshadow primer. Um, it's annoying that I have to be like, if you want the best out of this, you better get this. Uh, because not everyone wants to buy the Too Faced Glitter Glue Primer and not everyone owns it already. So when you look at it that way, it's annoying and I think it should not be a thing. But I can also look at it in the sense that it's quite wearable in some senses and then you can really ramp it up so it's like bold. Um, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. I've just accepted the palette for what it is. Um, you know, I've learned to work with it and now I appreciate it. So uh, yeah, it's a good palette. If you're into brights and colors and shimmer, um, I yeah, I would totally recommend it. Uh, there's nothing in the in this palette that is a complete piece of shit. So I think it, it's not bad money spent. $8 per shadow if you're buying it in Australia. Not bad. All right.
Alright guys, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget you can let me know what you thought of this review down in the comments section. And let me know what you think of the palette. Have you bought it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Have you not bought it for a specific reason? Let me know down in the comments. And until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.